All right, as I kind of suspected, the brown to brown is actually for the uh, charging system. So it shouldn't affect the way that the engine runs at all, at all, at all. So even if the brown to brown was completely, completely 100% shot, it should still run perfectly fine with this coil. This coil does have some damage to it. I'm gonna check the other coil now just to see how it compares to this one, but so far it's looking like that coil is good. 1.2 on the brown to brown. Purple to red. That is right in the middle, 350 to 520, and we're at 415. I suppose I could put that like that so you guys can see. Yellow to black. Yellow to black should be 21 to 32. We're up there. And then the last one, green to blue, should be 400 to 600. Green to blue. There we go. So this coil is good and it's not as physically damaged. So I think I'm going to use it. The original coil ended up with some actual damage to it due to something hitting it inside of the flywheel. find some screws for here. I have two. I don't remember what these came off of, but they came off something on the X2. And they're in my spare parts bin, so yeah, I'm free to use them. Really can't remember what I what I got them from. Oh, I think it was the trim. Some Oh yeah. Yeah, it's the screws that hold the plastic to the stainless steel. Yeah, screws that hold the plastic piece on for the trim adjustment, the standard trim adjustment, and I modified it and I kept these screws. So I have matching screws. Not that anybody will ever get to see them other than you guys and me. Yep, they work. Now, I'm kind of confused and concerned about the excessive amount of wire that sticks through here. This seems like a very bad idea because the, the, uh, the Bendix runs right here. So I'm gonna loosen this up and try to pull those wires through a little bit. Oh yeah, super easy. All right, let's get the yellow through because it's kind of stuck in the way. There we go. Now this brown one, pull that through. That makes a little bit more sense now. All right, let's blow these coils off. Uh, if you have a bunch of stuff stuck to your trigger coil, it could throw the timing off slightly. So you wanna make sure that there's no metal shavings or debris stuck to the, the pickup or the trigger coil. Sorry, I said that as though it were two different things. It's just two different names for the same thing. The trigger coil and the pickup coil 
are the same same thing. Tighten these back up before I forget because I almost forgot already. All right. Well, Kawasaki tells you to check the gap between the pickup coil and the flywheel. But I have no idea how you would go about doing that. There's not really any... Oof, you might be able to get in through here and check it with a special tool, but you'd never be able to see and do that at the same time. I need some six millimeter flange nuts, stainless. I need some six millimeter by 30 bolts. What else do I need? I need some proper fuel line, some good fuel line. I just stole this starter off of the X2 engine. <laughs> All right, here's the starter relay. It doesn't matter which side goes to which. While I was doing this, I just started thinking, I'm really close to being able to get this thing to fire. All I would need to do is figure out which pins to connect the CDI to. When I touch these to the relay, it should turn the engine over. Kind of doesn't make sense. If the starter gets hot, it should get hot at the brush end first. Anyway, uh, what to do next? All right, YouTube, I don't think I have any more in me for tonight. It is almost midnight. It's 11.41 p.m. And if you guys get to see this on Sunday, that means that I went in the house and edited this. It's going to be a mess of a video. I can tell you that right now. All right, YouTube, as promised, this was a bit of a mess of a video. I had some sandblasting cabinet work, some engine work, some electrical work some carburetor work. Did I already say sandblasting cabinet work? Anyway, good news, KMS uh, didn't get back to me. I went into the store to pick up some glass bead and some crushed glass. And I talked to somebody there and they said that I can just come into the store with the broken parts and exchange them. They have a floor model there and they're gonna let me rob the parts off the one there. I don't think they realize how big of a job it is to go <laughs> to get to the proximity sensor. So yeah, I'm just gonna go in with my tool bag and say, yeah, let me have those parts. But uh, I'm pretty sure they don't realize how big of a job that is. You have to take the whole top piece off or the whole electronics top piece anyway. Some more good news is that I ordered a proper vacuum pump and a vacuum chamber to help me do um, vacuum infusion and just vacuum bagging. The first layup of a bed plate, I'm fairly certain that I'm going to do a wet layup of fiberglass instead of using carbon fiber so that I don't waste a bunch of carbon fiber. It might turn out that I have a usable part the first time around, but I guarantee you that I'm going to learn stuff along the way that makes the second part better. So if the first part turns out kind of okay, then I will make a second one out of carbon fiber. If the first one turns out complete garbage, then I will try to learn from my mistakes, make another fiberglass one, and then when I finally get one that turns out half decent, the next one will be a carbon fiber one. But until I can kind of repeat the process and make a decent part out of fiberglass, I'm not gonna waste my carbon fiber on uh, 
yeah, a process that I have no idea what I'm doing with. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's been a very long day and it's been a very long week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I have no idea what I'm coming up with next. I'm sure this video was thrown together pretty roughly. I'm saying this before I've done the editing, but I plan on trying to throw this editing together pretty quickly because it's past midnight now and I'm extremely exhausted. I still haven't ordered my epoxy. I'm going to do that pretty soon. I have been trying to, I've been fighting uh, between ordering an if infusion epoxy. Uh, I'm sure most of you don't know, but you can get regular laminating epoxy. Well, you can get regular e general epoxy for doing repairs and whatever. Then you can get laminating epoxy, which is for actually laminating cloth and materials together. And then you can get infusion epoxy, which is a lot thinner and allows the vacuum to pull it through the cloth much more efficiently. The stuff that I'm probably going to end up getting has quite a long cure time, but it's not infusion epoxy. Um, anyway, the debate is, do I just suck it up and start doing infusion stuff or do I get both or do I get just... Anyway, my cat's yelling at me. I gotta go edit. <laughs> anyway, my cat's yelling at me. I've gotta go edit this video and hopefully get some sleep. That's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.